Hello, I'm Chris Flay and welcome to the Derbyshire Wye, one of my favourite rivers. We're going to be doing some grayling fishing today. The river's running a little bit high, but it is very clear. So let's look through some of the tackle that I use in this situation. So I've got two rods with me today. The first one which I've got here is a 10 foot for a three weight, which I'm going to be using for urine nymphing. The second one is a 10 foot for a four weight, which I'm going to use the indicator on. So let's look at the Euro nymphing setup first. We've got a fully caged reel down here at the business end. On there, I've just got backing and then a tapered leader, which is a camo French leader. What that'll do is enable me to flick out these lighter flies further into the water. So attached to that tapered leader, what we will have is one of these. This is a bicolored indication leader. I say bicolored, we've got pink, black and yellow there. What that'll enable us to do is see the indications when the sun goes in, we've got different colors on the water. So that's gonna help us pick up the, uh, the bites that we get. Now attached to that, we'll have a tippet ring and we'll have some four pound fluorocarbon. What we're gonna do is have this around about six foot in length. The reason I say that is that I think the deepest pool that we're gonna to fish today is around about six foot. We can shorten that when we get to some lighter riffles if we need to. We're going to have two flies on today's rig. So we'll have the point fly and then we'll have the dropper. Point fly is always that little bit heavier as that's the one that's going to graze the bottom, hopefully where those grayling are going to be. Now the dropper, I'm going to have about 18 inches above the point fly. So let's get on to the second rod of the day. This is a 10 foot four weight, but on this I've got a floating line. Now Derbyshire Wye is a little bit strange on our section because we're not actually allowed to wade it, hence why I've got these two setups. This one, a very, very simple setup. Floating line, attached to that, what I'm going to do is I've got some six and a half pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to have probably five or six feet of that, and then attached to that, we've got our four pound, which will be our leader section where the fly is attached to. Now the reason why I've got two separate line strengths on there, is because on the heavier section, we're going to be putting one of these on, an indicator. Three colours, depends on the light, which one's going to be easiest to see. And the six and a half pound is where we're going to attach that indicator. And because if we get it caught in a bush or a tree, which does happen, we're fishermen, we can't always have the perfect cast, we want to enable us to be bringing that indicator back and not leaving it in the river. On the point, we've just got one single fly we can use multi multiple flies if need to. I prefer using one and again it just alleviates tangles when we're using an indicator. I'll probably set the indicator around about four foot to start with because that's the pool that I'm going to be fishing in. So we're going to head upstream to the first pool where we'll have a look at fly selection. So the first setup that I'm going to use is the urine infin rod. What that'll enable you to do is sort of stand back a little bit but I'll be able to fish the start to the middle of the river. Now I've already chosen my flies that I'm going to use today. So on the point, because it's clear but running high, we've got a four millimeter quill orange tag. On the dropper, I've got a size 12 Tim Shrimp. So let's see if we can get something for you. I'm going to stay low because the water, as we've said, is ever so clear. And I'm looking at the seams here. Now I can see this gravel. I'm gonna pop these glasses on. So we've got quite a fast running seam on that far side where it comes off the bend. Now, I think they're gonna be sat from that bend towards this inside line. Now the wind's picking up, which isn't gonna make this really easy. And the sun's from behind me, so let's get really low down. Let's have the first cast of the day. So I can see that indicator quite well with this sun here. So we're probably two, three foot deep on this inside line. And that's running through nicely. It's just, I can feel it clipping the bottom, which is just how I want it. So there's a deeper hole just in the middle of this run here. And that's where I think they're gonna be. Remember staying as low as possible. Watching that indicator all the way through that run. Don't be afraid at the end of the swim 
at the end of the cast, sorry, to let those flies swing up because that imitates uh, a nymph rising from the bottom and you quite often get a grayling take then. So as I was saying, with the urine nymphing and the no wading, it makes it difficult for me to fish uh, sort of from half river over to that far side. So that's where that second rod and the indicator comes in play. So we'll give this another couple of runs through with the Euro kit and then we can we can switch over. Those fish can take any time those flies are in that water. So as soon as those flies hit, lift that rod just slightly, get that indicator tight and you may get one straight away. When you're walking along the bank with the Euro rod, just add a, a little elastic band where the dropper is. That'll stop it from all tangling up when you're walking along going from pool to pool. So we'll quickly run through the indicator setup. As I said before, we've got the six and a half pound there running from the floating line. Attached to that is uh, the indicator, which I've chosen orange. The sun's behind me now. Uh, that really shows up and, and pops well. And then we've got the four pound tippet, which I've probably got three to three and a half feet onto a three and a half mil pink tag. Now I know I've already fished this inside line with the Euro rod, but it doesn't hurt to go through it again with this indicator. One of those reasons I've got a different fly on. The, the grayling may chose, choose sorry, to eat this rather than the orange tag that we had on. So don't be afraid to, to go over water that you've already looked at. Let's get some line off that reel. So we don't want any drag, we want that indicator just flow down the river. But as you can see, we're able to fish that little bit further out now. There's one. I'm going to try and get a little bit downstream of him. Ah, he's gone. That's okay. That's okay. It happens. We've got the sun just starting to dip over the hill behind us. So we're going to put on what people know as a squirmy worm. Now at this water height, worms are going to be a natural food source for the grayling. So we're going to fish this rapid on this, on this near seam and see if we can get one to the bank for you. So we can see a few seams here now. Now we're a bit closer. Um, it looks like the bank actually starts where those reeds are popping out of the water there. So we can get a little bit closer. And let's make a cast. It will be quite difficult to, to euro this because of how far we've actually got to get out. That's going down fine. I'll stop it there. So grayling like to sit in between weed beds, uh, behind rocks, on gravelly areas. So that's what you've got to try and target for these fish. It does help when the river's clear. Thought I had a take then. You, you kind of treat the indicator like a dry fly. So with dry fly fishing, you want to be drag free. That's exactly what we want this nymph to be. So just going down naturally at the speed of the current until the end of the drift. Let's put one a little bit further out. Now, when you're further out, you've really got to mend and work that line. Finish the drift there and we can just flick that straight back out. Mm -hmm. 
So sod's law, while, uh, while we were setting the camera up, we managed to get a grayling. So I'll just show you very quickly. She's just been in the net for a few seconds. A lovely little Derbyshire Y grayling. Let's pop her back. So we've just taken a break from fishing for the moment to go through my top three tips uh, for winter grayling fishing. Tip number one would be colours of flies. Now, I know the squirmy's done it for us today, but my top two favourites are an orange tag and a pink tag. So that's my tip number one. Tip number two, it can be freezing on some of these days when we're out, and the temperature, when the sun goes behind a hill, can really plummet. So wrap up warm and stay safe on the river. Now, tip number three, fish care. So grayling are an absolutely stunning fish, but they are delicate. So please remember, when you are putting them back in the water, keep them in the water, keep them in the net, and wet the hands. So we've moved back to the first pool that we, we started in this morning. It's not been an easy day. We, us fishermen will blame the weather, we'll blame high pressure, we'll blame river levels. Uh, but we've managed to winkle out a few. We've, we've just got one, another one in the net now, all thanks to the squirmy. We tried the natural nymphs most of the day, and, and if I'm honest, they didn't really work. But we've persisted. We've only worked a small section. In these winter sessions that we go on for the grayling, you've really got to work the water. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've learned a thing or two and uh, tight lines when you go out for yourself. <laughs>